And praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. A change is coming. Can we say that? A change is coming. Have you ever felt there was a time that in your life that things were about to change? That new things were headed your way? Be, and hopefully it's a positive thing. And there was something in your gut, like you felt something like, man, I, 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 something is, 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 is going to change. I don't know what it is, but I'm believing for change. And for many of us who are believers or Christians, it's the prompting of the Holy Spirit. So in essence, the Holy Spirit prompts us and says, get ready for change. Every once in a while, you get that feeling. In other words, one season is ending and another season is beginning. Now, for the last couple of months, several pastors from the Bronx have been gathering. We gather here, in fact. From Mondays, uh, once a month, 10 to 12, and we've been seeking the face of God because we felt God is doing a tremendous work in the Bronx, a work we've never seen before in all our churches. People are coming into the church, and not just filling a church, but they have a hunger for Jesus. They want to be used. They're saying, I want God's will to be done in my life. We see it in all ages, but in particular, we see it in the younger generation. I tell you, I've been doing this a long time. Never in my 30-something years of ministry have I seen this many young people on fire for Jesus. Because before it was the dating game in church and the novella, the drama, and, and all these things. And they're still there, believe me. But overall, the consistency is I have a hunger for God. I want to get into the Word of God. I want to be mentored. I want to be discipled. I want to grow, know Jesus. I want to know this Jesus. That could only be explained by God. So I'm excited. We're excited. And we are praying and believing. And we said this season in the fall, September, October, November, December, God is going to be doing something that could only be explained by saying, but God. And so that's why I decided, and we prayed about it, and it says, you know, the new series that we're going to be doing is going to be calling Crossing Over. Crossing Over. When we're crossing over, that means that we are about to enter into our destiny. We're about to enter into our purpose. We are about to enter into the place where God wants us to be. As I was praying, I was saying, God, how do I begin this series? He says, I want you to tell the people one thing. They need to prepare to cross over. Because God's going to do what he's going to do. But if we want to get in it, we want to be used by God, we want to cross over, we need to prepare. So let's look at Joshua. We're going to be in the book of Joshua. We're going to start reading at chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. It says, early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out for Shittim, and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your position and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance, about 2,000 cubits, between you and the ark. Do not go near it. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to the priests, take up the ark of the covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. So let me give you a little background. Here we have Joshua, and Joshua was the newly appointed leader of the Israelites, and the Israelites are the people of God. 
Many of you have heard Moses, about Moses. Perhaps you've heard of Moses. Well, he was, Moses passed away. Now Joshua was in, was in charge. Now the people of God, because of their rebelliousness, because they didn't have faith in God or trust in God, they were delivered from Egypt, but they never saw the promises that God wanted to give to them. What was the promise? He wanted to take them to the promised land. And so, in essence, now Joshua was in charge, but now there was a whole new generation of people who heard about what happened in Egypt but never experienced it. And so, basically, all the Israelites that came out of Egypt with Moses died, except two, died in the wilderness. But now there was a new generation that had been arisen. And and, and so God was saying, I'm ready to do something new with a new generation. And that's what I want you to understand today. That today, there are many here today, you are that new generation that God is arisen and you have the faith. And God says, I'm going to do in you and through you what has never been done before. You have never seen it before. So they were excited. Imagine the excitement. Oh, God's about to do something. And so they went and it says they were encamped around the Jordan. In other words, they were so excited. And he says, okay, we're going across to the other side to the promise. Oh, man. What was the main obstacle that was preventing them to get to the other side? The Jordan River. There was no way they could do it. So why did they go there? Couldn't they find an Uber? Couldn't they fly a plane? Couldn't they take a ship? No, because this is exactly what God told them to be. This is the, the, the place he told them to go. Let's look at Joshua 1.11. He says, go through the camp. And tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. So here God was saying, I'm about to do something, and you're excited, but you don't know how he's going to do it. How many of us have found ourselves in that position? You know God's going to do something. But you look around and says, I don't see how this is possible, but that's okay because you know when you find yourself in a position, we don't like to feel that being in that position because it shows our limitations, but that's a great place to be in to show how great God is. Many of you find yourself in a situation or in a place that says, there's nothing more I could do, but you're in a great place to see what God can do. You can't restore your family, but God can restore your family. You can't restore your health, but God can restore your health. You can't make a difference with your community, but God can use you if you are willing to be used by him. They were camped. But see, they were camped around Jordan. But see, remember, this was the newer generation. And a couple of things happened in the wilderness. One, they began to know who God was. Because it tells us that God guided them by the day with a cloud and at night with fire. So they had a relationship with God. So they they were already used to being guided by him. They felt God's provision. It tells us that their, their clothes... Never worn to imagine them. Your kids, you know what I'm saying? Always don't have to buy them any more sneakers. I, I mean, it's going to say praise God to that, amen? They're not growing. Some kids, you buy them clothes, and the next month, you got to buy them clothes again because they're just growing. Not this time. They're, they're, they're cold, they're, because God did a supernatural work, and he also gave them manna from heaven, food from heaven. Every single morning, they would get up and have what? And get food from God. And so they knew the provision of God. And also, there were certain battles that they were fighting in the wilderness. So these ex-slaves learned how to be warriors. See, sometimes we don't want to be in the wilderness, but God has a purpose for us in the wilderness. You've got to understand, God is doing something. God is making you a warrior. Some of you didn't know how to pray until you went into the wilderness. Now you are a prayer warrior. Now you're standing on the Word of God. Now you know the provision of God because before you used to rely on your bank account, but when it ran out, you say, God, I need you to provide. And you will learn that he is Jehovah Jireh, your provider, and he will take care of you. So God has been taking care of you, and you learn all these things in the wilderness. So I'm telling you right now, don't fight the wilderness. Grow in the wilderness. Say, God, teach me in the wilderness. 
So they went in a position that says, Lord God, I know you're doing great things, but I don't know how we're going to get on the other side. But if you said it, it's going to happen. Imagine getting to that place when your faith that it's the God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. How many of us are going to say amen? It's, it's difficult. It's difficult to get to that place. It's a process, but it happens, and we are believing as a church. We've had a word from the Lord time and time again. Lord God, what is your Jordan? Our Jordan is the Muslim people that are out there. We see our community is changing, but it's like a Jordan. How do I reach them? I don't. It just seems like it's impossible. It's possible with God. The people from South America, Central America, you see them all around. Now more than ever. And I said to myself, there's a barrier there. Because it's not just language, it's culture. It's a different approach. We can't approach in the same way. Not everybody's Boricua. And you're going to say, not everybody's Dominican. Now we got Dominicans and Puerto Ricans in the Bronx, but now we got all these other people saying, we don't know what to do with them. They're not all Mexican, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> and so there's a barrier. Then I said, Lord God, give us the strategy. How do, we, how do we do this? And this is where you have to get to the point. Sometimes God brings us to this place where he says, crossing over is not possible without God. It's only possible with God, and, and that's okay to be in that position. It says, Lord God, I don't know how it's going to be done, but I know that you're going to give us the strategies to reach these people. I know that you're going to begin, begin to, to, to minister to the Muslim women and men and children, and they're going to come here and give their lives to Jesus. They're going to know the true Lord and Savior. There's too many of them. They're not, it is your will that none will perish, and we are believing for great things, and I want you to believe that for your own life. What is your Jordan? What impossible situations is that sin? Don't give up. That's now is not the time to give up, but to surrender to God. See, when we surrender to God, that's when we see the miracle. Only those who totally surrender to God and can't need a Jordan will get to cross over. Because some of you ain't there yet. You're still trying to make it work on your own terms, the way you want. Because we, we like to control. I like to control. I control. You know, I like handling my own stuff. I like dealing with my own stuff because I don't have to rely on anybody else because that's just the way I grew up. I had to take care of myself and I had to do what I had to do. But now, I remember, as I began to walk my journey with God, it was less dependence on me and more dependence on him. Yes. And that's, okay, yes, God is a God of love and trust and, and faith, but how I many know faith is built over time, over experience? I didn't have that kind of faith in the very beginning. I felt very uncomfortable just trusting God, relying on God. Because as, as a man, we said, we got to do what we got to do. We got we to make this happen. And sometimes we find ourselves, we can't do nothing about it. But you're not there yet. What I'm trying to tell you is that you're trying to work out your marriage without go, going to God. You're trying to change things. You're trying to make it work. And that's okay. But there comes a time when you completely have to surrender to God and say, God, I cannot do it anymore. If I'm going to get to the other side of the Jordan, if I'm going to get to the promises that you want, I have to surrender. Are you willing to surrender at this time? And if you're willing to surrender, it starts with surrender. Your way, not my way. Your ways are best, not mine. I don't have it. I don't have the resources. I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. I don't, nothing, nothing, nothing. I can get to a certain point. But what I need is a supernatural intervention. How many of you need a supernatural event, intervention in your life right now? You need God to move and work. So what do we need to do? We need to prepare. And we're going to look at four things we need to do as children of God in order to prepare for the, to cross over. The first thing, the first and second thing is we must look for God and follow him. Let's look at verse 3 again. Give orders, giving orders to the people... When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priest carrying it, you are to move out from your position and follow it. For those who don't know, the Ark represented the presence of God. 
So God was with amongst his people through the Ark of the Covenant. Many of you perhaps know the Ark of the Covenant because the Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know what I'm saying? But this is, it's in the Bible. It's based on the Bible. And so today we don't have an Ark. We don't know where the Ark went. Oh, man. What, what does that leave us? We're in a better position. As children of God, we're in a better position. I'm going to tell you right now why. Because the ark lives inside of us. The presence of God lives inside of us. I'm going to prove it to you. 1 Corinthians 3.16. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple? We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And that God's spirit dwells in your midst. In other words, if you are a child of God, I know you say, man, how could God live in this? I'm more messed up. But if you're a child of God, it don't matter. You are a new creation in Christ. And he's living inside of you. So instead of looking for the ark, today we have to be guided by the Holy Spirit that's inside of us. And that's difficult because there are certain problems. One problem is many of us have difficulty just being still in God. We're doers. I can't be still. Psalm 4610, I have someone brought me this plaque and I have it on my desk behind my wall. It says, be still and know that I am what? God. Because it's difficult because a lot of times we want to do things that we don't want to see. I, I, I'm the kind of person I can't wait for you to pray. All right, you want me to pray? Okay, well, give me the instructions as I leave the door and I got to do it. And it's one thing to come up here, I'm praying and believe by faith and the person's praying for you. You feel so encouraged. But the minute you walk out and say, I got to do what I got to do. I understand praying. For many of us, prayer is our backup plan. So we say, Lord God, if I'm going to work it, I'm going to do it. If I can't, then, then remember that prayer I said that Sunday. Well, those people pray, then, then, then you move in. But that's not the way it works and what we have to understand. So we have to be still and, and just to listen to the word of God and then hear who he is and, and, and just stop being so anxious. We're always worried. We're worried about things we have no control over. I can't worry about tomorrow because the Bible says tomorrow will take care of itself. In other words, I can who says I want to make it past today? We don't know that. And our anxious thoughts and it's worrying and fear. And if you grew up in a culture, in a home where, where everybody was worried and Titi was worried and mommy was worried and dad was worried and everybody was worrying and fear. And that's just a natural, it's a natural tendency that we walk. We always worry. When things are good, we're worried things are going to be bad. When things are bad, we're worried they're going to stay this way. We're just worried about everything. And so in essence, what we have to learn is to be still and know that he is God. And when you are still, then the voice of the Lord begins to speak to you. See, sometimes we just have to quiet the noise around us. Have you ever been driving in a car and suddenly you're at a red light and you listen to music or wherever, and then there comes this loud car next to you? Playing some bachata music. <laughs> Playing some music and it's loud, right? But beyond loud, right? You the windows are going boom, boom, boom. You hear that bass and stuff, and, and it's crazy. But and it, and that at that moment, that noise that's coming from that car is blocking your noise. It's it's it's, it's, it's limiting your hearing. And so while it's happening today, we want to hear from God, but there's too much noise next to us that's preventing us from hearing what God is saying in our lives. What kind of noise? The noise of the past, the way we used to do it, the noise of other people's voices, the, 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 the voices of the flesh, the, the voices of the devil. Some of us are more familiar with the voice of the devil than we are with God. Why? Because... He's been in our lives for a long time. He, he was calling the shots. Maybe you just started giving, you gave your life to the Lord. Maybe you're brand new to this, but you're more familiar with these things. And those voices are so real. And the devil's scheme is to make his voice believe that it is of God and that it's coming from you. This is the reality. This is what I want you to know. Any voice that contradicts the word of God is not of God. Now, I'm telling you right now. You're stupid, you're dumb, you're not going to make it, you're not smart enough, you're not good enough, all these things. That's not what the Word of God says. The Word of God tells us we are brand new creatures in Christ. The Word of God tells us we can do all things to God who strengthened us. The Word of God tells us if God is for us, who could be against us? 
that all things work out for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. You need to know the word of God. So when that car comes next to you and making all that noise, you just shut them out in the name of Jesus. You got to do it. Identify it first and say, that's not of God. You're never going to get rid of that lust habit. You're always going to be this way. You're always going to be in that addiction. You're never going to make it. Nobody in your family's made it. You think you're special? You're going to remain in this. But that's a lie from the pit of hell. That is contrary to the word of God. Our emotions, especially. I'm an emotional person. Emotions get in the way sometimes. And sometimes we think it's God. How many of you remember, thought it was God and it wasn't? A lot of times. Believe me, and that's the worst place to do it because now we got to suffer the consequences. Abraham and Sarah and all this stuff that he had. To, you know, if you look at the in history the, in the Bible, a lot of mistakes were made because we, we allow the emotions. We've got to drown that out. Drown that out and allow the Lord to buy. And so we say, okay, God, how do you make God's voice louder? You know, somebody wants a, a, a gigantic word. It's, it's simple. Read the Bible. Get into the Bible. I mean, really get into the Bible. I'm not talking about one devotion a day, one, one verse a day keeps the devil away. No, I'm talking about really getting into the Word of God and allowing the Word of God to speak into your life. And that takes discipline. But some of you say, well, it's hard for me to read. Okay, then get the audio book. Do whatever you, get the audio, do whatever you need to do. You know, sometimes when I order something on my, online, and it's not assembled, I have real problems. <laughs> Sometimes they say, can we assemble it for $50 extra? I would pay the $50 extra. Because I just don't do it. And, and it's like, you know, and then, because when I open it, I look, and it's instructions. And man, and sometimes they have pictures, and I'm trying to match it up, and I'm telling you in my house, you know, I, I, my toilet seat needs to be changed. I brought a brand new one. And, you know, I usually have people to help. My wife is very good at this, very good at this. But sometimes I, you know, I won't be the man in the house. You know, I, I got this, baby. I got this. I got this. I ain't got nothing. Praise the Lord. I just tell you right now. <laughs> so, so whatever it is, you know, cabinet on this. And I start. And then, you know, I, and I'm... <sighs> Oh! I'll try it again. I'm not going to read this whole thing. This is too long. I got, I got short attention span. What's that? Over there. Look at that. Over there. No, look at that. Oh, oh, oh you got to go back here. Oh, yeah. Mm, what's it then? Smells good. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I got to do this. I get distracted. Then I just go, ah, forget it. That's too much. And so you know what I got right now? A broken toilet seat at home. But why am I telling you this? Because... That's how we treat the Word of God. Instead of meditating on it, absorbing it, some of us want quick answers, a quick response. Instead of reading the Word of God, we turn to social media. We go to a YouTube video. Oh, the Lord spoke to me. The Lord spoke to me. <laughs> or we go to the prophetic conference. Deliverance! Ah, I got to go to deliverance ministry! And God says... That's good, but if you really want to get to know me, you got to get into the Word. Read all the instructions. It says, look at what, look what it tells Joshua 1 in Joshua chapter 1. Remember, Joshua, we love this guy, verses 7 and 8. He says, be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey all the laws. Say all. all. The laws my servant Moses give to you, and do not turn from it right to the left. Then you may be successful wherever you go. Keep the book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Amen. The key word in there is everything. Turn to your neighbor right now and say everything. Amen. Put it online, everything. Amen. And that's where we have a problem. I, I don't have a problem with it. There's certain things I don't mind. But then certain things, God gets all over my business, and it's contrary to who I am. God says, forgive. Love your enemies. Pray for your enemies. 
plead you for lust. Do not give the appearance of evil. He says all these things, and there's one thing in the Bible that I, I could admit it for myself. Can you admit that if that one thing was not in, in the Bible, you'd be the best Christian ever? <laughs> right? <laughs> See, if, God, if the Bible never talked about sexual immorality, well, <laughs> I would be the, hallelujah, I'd be up there with the angels. <laughs> but he does talk about it. So God does get into your bedroom. And when he does, I ain't reading that page. No. I'm, here for the, I'm here for the blessing menu. I want the grace menu. Uh, um, could I have some grace with mercy and, and blessings? Extra blessings, please. And how many know we don't obey everything? What, what he tells us, you're not going to find success. And that's what people don't get it. Because they want success, they want it, they're doing all this stuff. It's, but I don't understand. God is, God is failing me. God isn't failing me. God is not failing you. You're not reading all the instructions. You're not giving in, especially the areas. And we all, I'm not going to look. How many of you say you struggle? You struggle with one or two things in the Bible, right? Raise your hand. Put it back down so I won't see you. All right. So tell the truth. Change the devil, right? And, and, and so we struggle with it. But this is the thing is I'm trying to walk with God, but I'm not following all his. And I'm going to ask you a question. How many decisions have we made without consulting God? I'm guilty of that. Making decisions. I there have been so many times I thought it was God. It felt God, but I never asked God. But it felt right. Oh, I got this. You know, we go to the field. Oh, I feel the spirit. The, 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 she walked in the room and, oh, that was her. That's her. That's her. <laughs> and then you are dating them after a couple. And I want to tell you right now, I didn't say this for the first service, but the Lord specifically told me, I have to tell you. I'm going to tell you right now, brace yourself. Some of you who are now new in the Lord are not ready to date anyone. I got to say it again. You're not ready to date anybody. I know you don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. You know, God's the other church. But I'm telling you right now, what God is telling me, and God told me, and says, I didn't say in the first service, but I know specifically, he reminded me just now. He says, be careful because you're not ready to date anybody. He said, you got to get to know me because what's going to happen, you're going to go back into the flesh. You're going to go all this stuff. You're going to be doing stuff that is your old self. And so some of you, and, and, and I know some of you, you've always dated somebody. And today in church, thank God, you look around, look around. Woo, look at her, look at him, look at him, look at him. Woo, I'm at a candy store. Come on. Let's be real. Let's be real. But you ain't ready. God kept me single before I met my wife for two years. It was the two youngest years of my life. <laughs> and I tried. I, I, I tried to be. But every time I went out with somebody, it didn't work out. It just, think, it just got worse. It, it, it just brought me into the flesh. It was because I was disobeying God. Oh, but God, you said you, I had to help me. Oh, God. God said, you ain't ready right now, Mitchell. And I'm telling you right now, some of you ain't ready to date. I know. I'm not saying it's never going to happen. You know, you have to be a priest or not. But I'm telling you right now, you just wait on the Lord. How many of you wait on the Lord? God's going to give you a good thing. God gave me a good thing, a good thing. <laughs> keeping your eyes on the Lord, like you're keeping your eyes on the ark, keeping your line on God's line is a process. It happens every day. You might get it right one time. You might get it wrong. But continue to do it. Continue to do it. And you reach to a place where you say, God... I believe in you. I trust in you. No matter what, I, I, and his voice is the loudest. If you hear it clearly, you understand. People would say, I heard from God, I heard from God. When I, I don't hear from God. I don't know what you're talking about. But I wasn't getting into the word. Once I start getting to the word, the more you get into the word, the clearer his voice. I'm going to move on real quick because for time. The second thing, the, 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 second, the third and fourth thing we need to do, if you desire to cross over, we must reverence God and separate ourselves. Let's look at verse 4 and 5 again. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance 
for about 2,000 cubits between you and the ark, and do not go near it. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. A couple of things here. You think that God would want us to get close to him. Yes, he does want us to get close to us. But this is a saying that says familiarity breeds contentment. How many of you heard that before? What does that mean? That there's a, there's a possible, in essence, if you find yourself in a person, you get too comfortable, you know the person very well, you begin to lose respect for that person. Give you an illustration when it comes to parent and child relationship. When you, you know, no longer, oh, I want to be my kid's friends. And, and believe me, I was a youth pastor for, 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 for like so many years. And, you know, if my kid's going to smoke weed, we're going to smoke weed in the house. You know, we're, we're going to smoke weed together. Because, you know, and I was like, that's some crazy nonsense. That's some crazy nonsense. Even to this week where the, this father, and I feel bad for him, he brought his son a gun, a 15-year-old, a gun. In Georgia, the shooting, the mass shooting just happened this week. Who buys a 15-year-old a gun? Knowing that the kid has problems. A 15-year-old, your hormones are all over the place. You're, you, you're, you're just all over the place. But sometimes, and this is what happens, we become too casual. And sometimes we can become too casual when it comes to God. We, we forget the awe of God. What is the awe of God? The Bible defines it as fear and deep respect for God's power and authority. In other words, when God is moving and working, you begin to identify things in your own life and in my life. And it says, hey, I can't compromise. I can't play with sin. I, I, I can't be one way in church and one way out church. Because a lot of us know the word of God, but we ain't living the word of God. You can't be talking, preaching. You're praying. I see people praying here. Oh, I'm praying for you, praying for praying. But you're on a porn side at nighttime. That don't work that way. It don't work that way. And it happens. That's the reality of the situation we, we all find ourselves in. I love Jesus, but I love we too. I love Jesus, but I'm going to do it my way. And then it happens that we're confronted with this, and that's the dilemma. And it says, Lord God, and I know it's a struggle. We all struggle with sin, so believe me, I'm not saying that we're perfect. But it's habitual sin, a habitual sin when it's no longer a problem. When you say it's okay, so you say, and this is how it is. We, Monday to Friday, you know, we're here in church. I love Jesus, amen. But we walk out, I said, Monday to Friday, we do, I'll go back to our thing. We do whatever we need, to, we need to do, we feel we need to do. Saturday, ooh, I got to cleanse, oh, I'm ushering. On, on Sunday, ooh, got to make sure, spray myself with lights, so make, no, make, make sure, you know, my, my, you know my, my clothes don't smell like we get the visine drops, da, 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 da. <laughs> breath mist, I see people, breath mist, <clears throat> I said, you can fool people, but you can't fool God, that's the one we got to answer to. Don't play with God. Believe me, there's times where I've, I've messed up. I'm telling you right now. There's times where I've lived a horrible life, the worst weeks of my life. But I came to church with a, a repentive heart. Not to say that I was perfect, but I say, Lord God, I messed up. I messed up. I, I deserve your wrath. But thank God for your grace and mercy. Thank God if I confess my sins, you are faithful and just to forgive me yourself. It's not coming to church to be perfect, but don't come to church to be a hypocrite. Don't come to church and lie. You don't, if there's times where you don't, you can't pray for somebody because your life ain't together. That's okay to say that. I don't got it together right now. I'm in sin. I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm messing around. Oh, things I, oh, you don't have to tell everybody your business, but you know it says, look, just pray for me. Pray for me. That's when we, we, don't, we can't lose the awe of God. We lose it when we compromise with sin, when it's okay to disobey God. When God tells us something, he says, ah, I don't want, let me think about it. Is there another option? Is there another plan B? Many of us read the word of God and say, oh, God, want the guidance. We get prayed for and people, yes. Yes, 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 yes. You got to break up with that relationship. Yes, 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 yes. Amen, amen. Walk outside. Bring you, get, you get the phone call. Well, yo, where you at? I'll be right there, right? Come. <laughs> Isn't that true? Come on, come on, come on. You just said you were going to break up. And all he did was call you. Oh, I fell to the temptation. No, you didn't even. It wasn't even a, a battle, nothing. 
<laughs> Second thing is, okay, you gotta go. Consecrate, consecrate yourself. We don't use that word anymore, but basically it's separating ourselves from the things that are evil that contaminate our lives. Now, when we gave our lives to the Lord, I don't know about you, but a lot of things fell off. Yes. Right away. My desire for liquor, my desire for weed, cursing, came off. You know, I wouldn't say that in perfect record. I'm not going to lie to you. Right? What's it? But for majority, that desire. Ooh, but there were some other things that held on. Ooh, ain't going nowhere. And that's what we struggle with. I used to come to church, and I'll keep it in the eye. And I prayed to God that no one would see the one thing that I was hard, difficultly holding on to. Most of us, we come to church, praise the Lord, saints. God is good. We hold it on. We, were like, we got this thing in the back, right? We got this thing in the back, and what's happening is this, that thing. Is, and God is telling us you got to concentrate. That one thing, that relationship you're in, that old mindset, whatever it is. And this is how do we do it? So let's go, how do we do it? we got to remember we're new. It's like, well, this is what we try to do. It's like when, 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 how many of you have traveled at the airport, right? And you know that the, the, the suitcase limit is what? 50. Oh, come on, 50 pounds, right? And how many of us get real close? 48? 49, 49 and a half, oh, not 50. Because, you know, and I always pray, God, please don't let me be one of those people that open up the suitcase and be like, put that here, put that in that bag, put that in that bag. I don't want to be that person. And I'm too cheap to pay $25 because you already took a lot of my money. You ain't taking any more of my money. And so what happens is we find ourselves in that position where, we, where, we, where, we, where we're dealing with that. And this is what many of us, we're trying to cross over with all this baggage. I want to be where God wants me to be. God says, well, you, can't, you, gotta let, you gotta empty the suitcase. You got more than 50 pounds. How many of you got more, 50, more than 50 pounds in your, in your suitcase? And you say, but I, I, I can get over. And no, God's saying, no, you're not gonna be able to cross over. This is, and th- let me give you an illustration real quick. Because in, I, I love what the scripture verse that it tells us that in, in Hebrews chapter 12, one, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses, to the life of faith. Let us strip off any weight that show, slows us down. This is the poem part, especially that sin that so easily trips us up. How many of us tripped up our sin? And let us run with endurance the race that has been set before us. So here is telling us you got to throw it out. You've got, you got to do something. It's up to us. People saying, God, deliver me. God, deliver me. God says, you're already delivered. It's up to you. So this is, this is, this is how we get rid of stuff, all right? So this is the, this is the thing. And so when we come to church, we'll be like, Lord God, I give this up, whatever your, this is. But I'm going to keep it right here. I'm keeping it right there, close enough. My anger. I gave it to Jesus. I gave it to Jesus. Some of the... Yo, what's up with that hairstyle, Jose? What's up with that? You think you're better than me because you got my braids or something like that? What's up with that? You totally messed up. You ain't right. You're fighting for my hair. You got all this nice hair, man. You see, it was close enough. And this is what we do with lust. Oh, yeah, I, I, man, I give it up. But Wednesday night, you'd be like, what he wants us to do is throw it as far. Throw it to the place where you cannot see it. When you do that, that's when you're serious with God, not when you drop it around you. Close enough. That means cutting off friends. That means there are certain booty call numbers that you need to get rid of on your phone. I want to minister to all. You don't want to minister to all. Stop lying. That's what we say all the time. We justify our sin. And we got to throw it as far as possible. When you begin to do that, you find yourself, and I'm going to close, you finally find yourself in a place where you're like, right, I'm preparing myself. Because, see, God wants you to cross over, but many of us will never make it. We're going to stay in the wilderness, stay on the wrong side, because we're not preparing. We're not taking it serious. It's up to you to do it, not anybody else. Not betting anybody else. Plan it. We got to plan it. And when I plan, when I go on vacation, there's a lot of things I need to do. When I plan, when I go on vacation, there's a lot of things. I'm not, I don't want to be the kind of person laying on the beach with that virgin pina colada, right? And, 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 and just, oh, I forgot this, I forgot this. So I go down a list. 
I need a cat sitter. I got to pay this. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do that. I got to make sure that everything is done. And most of all, I have to have my passport when I get to the airport. Because if I go on that ship and, and they know me, oh, hey, Mitchell, how you doing? But then I don't have the passport. I ain't going in. So what I'm telling you, if you want to cross over, you've got to prepare. You've got to do it. You've got to go on the mental list. And so I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and saying, what's in your life right now that needs to get rid of? Maybe you said, I need to take you more serious. I need to stop following you. Stop following my emotions. I need to be guided by your spirit. I, whatever he's telling you right now, you just have to listen. Listen, listen, follow God. Have you lost your reverence for God? Have you uh, continued? Uh, you're not separating yourself. You need God is telling you, you need to separate yourself from something or someone. Some of you, relationships. I tell you right now. I understand. I've been in church. People love Jesus, but you're sleeping around with somebody. You ain't married yet. Oh, we repent every Friday before we come to church on Sunday. That's not the way it works. That's not your spouse. You not married. I heard somebody say, oh, we're spiritually married. Now, what kind of nonsense is that? I'm telling you. He said that I'm in spiritual. No, that's the devil. That's a lie. He'll tell you whatever he wants to get what he needs. Don't bow our heads. God finish. I can't say no more. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I want you to come back next week. Praise the Lord. Bow your heads.